Graduate students have been taking up a lot more space in the news than we're used to lately, and the reason that that is is because of this kind of widespread disdain for the GOP tax plan. And obviously not everybody is a graduate student or like knows one intimately, so they may be confused as to, you know, what the big deal is, as to why we are so angry, considering that this thing is being advertised as being this massive tax cut for the middle class. First off, there's the whole question as to whether or not this is actually going to provide a tax break to the middle class, but that's not something I'm going to get into right here. There's already a whole bunch of really good articles discussing that fact, discussing the nuances of that. I, I encourage you to go read widely about that. So the first thing, and I guess the big thing, is the fact that this bill has the potential to double, triple, or even quadruple the income that graduate students would have to pay taxes on. And that's not because it's like magically giving us double or triple or quadruple the amount of money we currently have in our pocket. No, no, it's, it's, I, while we wish. So just like undergrad students, graduate students take classes, right? And those classes have a, you know, a, a, a tuition rate associated with it. Depending on the university that you go to, the expense of graduate education can be a bit, uh, can be a bit high. So here at the University of Florida, where I attend and I work at, the estimated uh, annual tuition rate for graduate education is going to be about $25,000. So obviously $25,000 a year for a degree that could take, you know, two or three years for a master's or, you know, five to eight years for a PhD is, is obviously prohibitively expensive. And that, again, that's actually UF, and UF is actually fairly inexpensive. MIT costs, you know, $50,000 a year. And obviously that would be rather prohibitive. So what they do is they issue uh, tuition waivers, right? They say, you know, we would normally charge you this amount of money, but we're going to waive your tuition uh, for you. You are no longer on the hook for that $25,000, $30,000, $50,000 that it would cost for you to attend classes here. And on top of that, they will often also provide a stipend, right? Something between, you know, $13,000, $20,000, maybe $35,000, depending on, you know, the field and the amount of work that you're doing. This is for you to be a grader, for you to be a research assistant, for you to be a TA or even a teacher. So we do a lot of work for the university, and for that, they waive the cost of us being there and then offer us a stipend so that, you know, we can afford to have rent and groceries and other stuff like that. But here's the thing I want to emphasize. That tuition waiver was previously not considered taxable income. It was not considered something that we would be taxed on, but under this bill, it now is. The thing is that before this bill, my income was taxed about, you know, $20,000 a year. So before, you know, credits and, and other things like that, my tax liability would be about $700. But this bill takes my taxable income from $20,000 and brings it to $45,000, meaning that the amount of tax liability that I, I am liable for has moved from like six, $700, right, $800, whatever it was, to like $4,000, which you may recognize as 25% of my income. And just to explain, how frustratingly backwards that logic is, I'm going to need to use an analogy. So imagine that jobs are kind of hard to find and that there's this one company that would provide a lot of good benefits and a lot of different stuff like that. Imagine also this is a society where the, you know, the automobile and everybody took off and not many people actually have their own cars. And this business is located at a point which is like 50 miles away from 95 percent of the population. So in order to make sure that their employees can actually get to where they're supposed to work, they'll provide them with a company car. A car is a benefit that allows them to be able to work at this location, right? But aside from that, they're not allowed to take the car anywhere else. They're not allowed to do anything else with the car, not allowed to go on vacations with it, take go, you know, go to the grocery store, not allowed to do anything else like that. It's for go from their house to the place of work. For a while, this sort of system makes sense and everything kind of works out. And one day, the government comes in and says, you know what? We are no longer just going to tax you based off of your income because that's not all the worth you seem to have. On top of your income, we're going to start taxing you for the value of this company car. The thing is, however, is that that company car is not a fungible good. You cannot translate the value of that car into groceries. You cannot translate that into, you know, anything else aside from the fact that it takes you from point A to point B. That car isn't income. See, the reason that I like this analogy so much is because the stipends are actually really just a vehicle to be able to get people to attend graduate school. Like with the car, we don't actually ever see the actual value of the tuition waivers. The university is just in effect giving us a company car and saying, you know, you can use this to be able to come here. It's kind of a big deal when the administration stands up there and promises that every American household is going to have on average, you know, $4,000 in deduction, but my household, on the other hand, is going to have, you know, $3,200 in additional taxes. What gets me mad are my 
colleagues and, and people whom I know, friends of mine who are at Yale, people I know who are studying to get their degrees at MIT, these places where their stipends are, you know, as much as mine or even less than mine, but the costs are way higher. And at those sorts of places, right, you know, where you could be making $16,000 a year and your school costs, you know, fifty to $70,000 a year, you're now going to have to figure out how to make that $16,000, you know, stretch to fit a, you know, $10,000 tax liability. It's, it's frustrating, it's egregious, it's, it's, it's infuriating, and, and I, don't, I don't even have any more words. As always, I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts in the comments section. I will provide a few links to the things I've talked about in the doobly-doo, as always. If you found value in this video, I hope you consider giving it a thumbs up. If you want to support the channel, you can do so by commenting down below, by sharing this video, and by subscribing to the channel and stay in the loop for more social science content is uploaded. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.